Hi there, Martin Popoff, uh, back for Overkill Reviews. This is Banger's uh, weekly metal review show. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on. I just got back from Connecticut where I got to induct Uri Heap into the Hall of Heavy Metal History, right on stage in front of 5,000, 6,000 people. It was very cool, right before the song Gypsy. I just did a short video for the Patreon donors, so you could check that out there. Speaking of our Patreon donors, if you can, um, you know, donate if you, uh, if you like what you see. Don't forget to subscribe. This week, we're reviewing the new album by a Bay Area thrash legend. This is who I am, despite what you believe. A formless figure from the depths, destroying all I see. This is who I am, yes, I'll always be. The dark horse black plague, anti-god that lives in you and me. That's right, the band we're looking at is Death Angel, and that was Humanicide, uh, the title track off their new album, out today on Nuclear Blast. Let me tell you how they got to be so beloved. Uh, basically started in 1982, but you know, the real world doesn't really hear about them until about 1987. They put out a couple of great albums, The Ultraviolence and Frolic in the Park. I love those albums. They had a lot of personality. They weren't trying to be perfect. They had this kind of ragged, punky, and even funky sound. Um, so they, they got a lot of attention right off, right off the bat. From there, they, uh, they put out an album called Act Three. They kind of get more professional and bulked up. Uh, the band was, was well on its way. They had this great sound with a lot of personality and interesting ethnic kind of roots to them. They were Philippine ethnic uh, guys. Uh, and then they have a big tour bus accident and drummer Andy Galleon is badly injured and he takes like a year to recover. So they had all this momentum going and then all of a sudden this disaster struck. They essentially broke up the band. They had a side kind of more alternative thing called the organization. They eventually decided to reform. They came back in 2004 stronger than ever. Ever. They had an album called The Art of Dying. They've had like, I think it's six albums now at this point. They've gone on lots of major tours. They're incredible live. They're great in interviews. They're really positive guys. And they, they are just one of the bands that really a lot of people have, uh, you know, a lot of fondness for in that next four bank after the big four. Again, call it the big eight if you want. What I like about these guys is that uh, you can tell that they're absolute thrash warriors. They're from the trenches. They're from the Bay Area. They've had their, um, their, their cool sort of personal vibe that they injected into the band early on. When you listen to a Death Angel album now, you are hearing a lot of experience. You're hearing great production. This is Jason Suikoff again. I think it's the fourth album in a row that he's produced. It's not too, too modern. It's, it's kind of organic. It's got a kind of like a, like a good earthy vibe to it, uh, but everything's kind of in its place. There's some incredible stuff on this. Revelation Song and Aggressor would be my two favorites. I like when Death Angel kind of uh, reaches a little bit, uh, maybe gets a little bit of doomy in there, maybe a little bit, bit of progressive in there. They have a good punk element to them, uh, and you're hearing that across some of these songs where you're hearing kind of the melding of punk and thrash, and even a little bit of melody in there. You know, Mark's vocals, uh, I love his natural voice. You're hearing a Pantera-esque voice, you're hearing a Slayer voice as well, but my favorite is the more singing voice that he used on the first couple of albums back when they were totally naive. Uh, you know, young pups. So yeah, great album. A lot of lot of variety uh, in the songs. Lyrically, it's pretty interesting too. I mean, almost every line is like three or four words. It's almost like shouting out of slogan. But it's kind of cool in that respect too, where it's uh, where it's just not too uh, ghoulish for ghoulish sake. You can tell there's some social commentary going on there. Yeah, that's what I like about the record. Um, I have a lot of time for Death Angel. I've liked a lot of these previous albums as well. Let's look at a little bit of what I don't like about this record. There is this uh, element, and I know I've mentioned this before in other reviews, where there's almost too much perfection going on. What I love about Thrash is that it's an incredibly competitive arena 
where everything is expected to be absolutely locked down and professional. The playing is virtuosic. The production is great. Everybody knows what to do to, to make sure it doesn't get too, too desktop metal, as Andy Sneap might say. Sometimes that can go a little over the top, and I do find there is too much of that perfection thing that goes on. I do love Mark Osagueda's voice, um, but I'm not crazy when he goes too histrionic and too Phil Anselmo-esque or, uh, or Tom Araya-esque. I'm not crazy about emo melody or alternative melody. And, and what I like about this record is there's a little bit less of that uh, than, there, than there was on the last album. And another thing to complain about, which just seems ridiculous to complain about, the albums are almost coming too fast. And, you know, I was on the drive over here, I was listening to the last album, and I'm thinking, these songs are kind of interchangeable. Same producer, same lineup. <laughs> So there's the good and the bad. Um, for those reasons, I'm going to give this record four skulls out of five skulls. So yeah, it's the spring. It's an exciting time for metal. There's a lot of cool things coming out. My Dying Bride, a band that we used to cover for years and years, Brave Words and Bloody Knuckles, love these guys, original Doom band. They have a big book and five CD box set coming out called The Harvest of Dread. And uh, also Warrior Soul, another very interesting band that started uh, in the kind of alternative post-grunge era with Corey Clark, really political band. They have a new album out called Rock and Roll Disease. You know, we've been talking about thrash today. The Rods go back to that upstate New York Metallica sort of story. They were kind of like a biker band early on, but they're back with an album called Brotherhood of Metal. And a cool uh, Finnish band, the DAD, Disney After Dark. They have a new album coming out, so that's going to be interesting to hear as well. See how they've adjusted from all that rock and roll history. So yeah, there's a, there's a good variety of cool new releases for you guys to check out. So there you go. That's my take on this new Death Angel album, Humanicide. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, please leave your comments below and uh, that's it for me for now and uh, don't forget to subscribe.